Today's episode, we're going to be repairing an Atwood RV furnace. We're going to troubleshoot it, we're going to replace a part in it and get it functional. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I've had a problem with this Atwood furnace, RV furnace. So uh, we're first of all going to track down uh, where the problem is. So let's open the panel up. I'll show you what the furnace is doing and we'll also show you what it's not doing. Take a Phillips screwdriver and remove these four screws that are holding that in place. Turn the thermostat on to heat and we'll go out and turn the fan on to make sure there's power getting to the unit. If there was no power going to the unit, you'd want to check your batteries first to make sure your batteries are fully charged if it's not hooked up to uh, shore power, which is plugged into a house circuit, uh, 110. Uh, and uh, in this case, we are plugged into 110. My batteries are fully functional and operational. Next thing I wanna check is your fuse box. Make sure you don't have a blown fuse. And then make sure your, uh, your thermostat is functional. This particular thermostat is a battery operated thermostat that is digital and programmable. I installed this in a previous video. This uh, thermostat is rated to where the little AA batteries actually power the unit and operate, uh, it powers a little switch in there and that switch uh, can take anywhere from um, 2 volts to 24 volts and push it through to the uh, board down here, the fan unit, uh, on another switch, which is a little solenoid switch. And that little switching mechanism, only it, right now is allowing 12 volts to run through there. So yes, this is a, a household uh, thermostat that I installed on, this, uh, on the coach. A household thermostat will work so long as it's the model, the type that has little AA batteries in there that actually run the switching mechanism in the th unit itself. And it, like I said earlier, this thermostat will accommodate anywhere from 2 volts clear up to 24 volts. Now we're only running 12 volt system through there so it clicks a uh, switch, allows the energy to come back through and goes to this switch right here. This switch right here is a relay. It allows, it has 12 volts going through this leg which is, acts as a solenoid and then the main power voltage or actually this, this leg right here and this leg right here are your 12 volt with all of its 12 volt and the main switch is what allows the main power to come through and energize the uh, the control board you also want to make sure that this isn't tripped this is a circuit that can trip make sure that that's pushed in and then make sure your switch is turned on and now we have power going to the unit so there is power going into through the unit Yes, the thermostat works, the, uh, the fuses are fine because it's allowing power to get through to the unit so you can hear where the fan is going. Another point of troubleshooting, if your furnace ain't lighting, check the propane. You could be out of gas too, but I just filled these. I have plenty of gas. There's heat coming out of there now. But I got a problem here. My control board is not lighting up. And the control board is what activates the solenoid on the gas to allow the gas to go. And also the control board ignites the spark 
which starts the flame in the first place to give us heat. So we've got another problem going on in the unit right here. There are two other switches that could fail in this unit. Way back deep in there where these two wires go to, it goes to what they call a high temperature limit switch. This is a high temperature limit switch. I purchased this just in case, so I had one on hand in case it fails. And right behind this shroud here was the fan going is a sail switch. That sail switch could also fail. This is a sail switch. When the fan goes, it blows this down and closes the circuit. So it'll allow, allow the, uh, the electricity to move through the wires and then light up the control board. So what happens is, this is a continuous wire, one continuous wire. One end of the wire goes to one end of this high temperature limit switch. Another wire comes out, goes around to the sail switch, and then the sail switch, a wire is focused on this other part, and comes out and goes to the control board, and that is your circuit for these two switches. And these are safety features built into your furnace. So uh, I've got my voltmeter right here, and I'm going to test to see what's failing and why my control board is not getting power. Okay, I'm setting my meter to 12 volts right there. I'm going to test these two wires right here uh, because this goes, this comes from the power down to the limit switch and then back out to the sail switch. And if the limit switch is bad, uh, one wire will be dead. If, uh, and if the sail switch is uh, not uh, malfunctioning, then the other wire will be dead. So. Let's see if this works. Watch the meter. Let's put the negative right here. And then the positive right here. Nothing. The sail switch is bad. And this goes to the limit switch. Limit switch is functioning. Turn that off. So this tells me we have to replace that sail switch. So let's go ahead and replace the sail switch and then we can see if my board actually lights up. To access that, I have to remove this shroud. These two little points right here is where the sail switch is mounted, right on the back side of that. So we gotta get this cover off. We're gonna remove this. There's two screws in there that hold that in place. And we'll just bring that out of the way as much we can. <laughs> and we have another screw right here. Let's pull this board out of the way. It's just held in by a uh, a wing nut. Disconnect it there. Disconnect it there. And that is the control board. Now I did make sure that the control board was still good because I took it down to an RV repair shop and they bench tested it for me for free. And this is fully operational. That's another thing to troubleshoot and make sure it's not your control board. Yeah, you can just pull it right out of there real easy, take it down to an RV place and they'll bench test it for you for free. Okay, now we pull this off. Theoretically, there's another screw right here. Got it. And let's see if there's another one. Yep, there's another one right up here on the top. So there's four of them.
and there's that limit switch right there that has failed so let's take that out of there and replace it with a new one take the white wire off and plug it back into the same spot as this other one and the blue wire plug that in and place this back on. This way we don't have to pull the full the whole furnace out of here. This makes it a little bit easier. And you got this ring, make sure you get that back on in its proper place. Ugh. I got to work out a jerry rig to keep this screw on here long enough to get it started. I'll be right back. For those hard to uh, reach screws, just to get them back into place, tape. I've used this process before. Put this over the, t the screw. And now it's not going to go anywhere until I set it in place. That's a homestead hack. And it's in place. Now we got to get the bottom one. Yep. We'll do the bottom one the same way. Yeah, because sometimes the screws just are not cooperating. Okay. Here we go. Victory. I fished that bit out of there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Now we got to remount this. There we go. The other little screw. My control board. And that just slides right into place there. Plug that in. Put the wing nut on. Now before when we turned this on, the little green light on the control plate was not lighting up and that's how I knew it was one of the switches because it just was not getting power. All right. It should be ready to go. Okay, turn it on. We got power. It's green. And now we got fire in there. The heater's fixed. I'm going to park this limit switch right in here so I, not ha I have it handy if I should ever have to use it. So we're done here. The furnace is now operational.
Well, now most all furnaces have the same set of uh, switches, types of switches, that uh, this could be applicable to just about any RV furnace. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen from Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I want to thank you for joining me on this episode. Yeah, replacing a failed sail switch. Uh, yeah, these things get gummed up. Look how dirty that is. Yep, that's probably partly why it failed. Anyway, please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I do upload them. I've got some other backyard mechanic episodes going on here coming up shortly. So yeah, I have the time on my hands and I'm gonna be taking care of those. Please smash that like button and also click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out. Hey, be safe, always be kind. We'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope this helped you out. Bye-bye now.